Hi, third grade. Today we're going to be working with lesson 3-6, but before we get started in our math lesson, I need you to get out a math notebook if your teacher gave you a math notebook or get out a piece of paper, something that you can write with and follow along with me since you don't have your whiteboard at home like you would in normally in class. So we're just going to use a piece of notebook paper or an actual notebook if you have like an actual clean notebook that you can use. That would be great. So pause the video and go and grab that if you don't have that already. All right, once you have your piece of paper or your notebook, we are going to write at the top of our notebooks every lesson so that we can kind of stay organized what lesson it is. So at the top of your notebook page, I just want you to write lesson 3-6. Okay, so that's today's lesson and then any work that I want you to do in your notebook you're just going to do underneath this and then tomorrow when we do the next lesson or the day after that you'll be with me um, you'll write the next lesson at the top of the page so we can kind of stay organized on what work is for what lesson okay so the first thing I want you to do on in your notebook underneath where you wrote lesson 3 6 is answer your mental math and fluency problems so I'm going to give you three choices, and you need to tell me which one of these has a sum of about 200. So in your notebook, if you think 153 plus 52 is about 200, write that in your notebook. 75 plus 63, write that in your notebook if you think that gets you close to 200. Or 198 plus 71. So which one of these three equals about 200? Write your answer in your notebook. All right, those of you that wrote 153 plus 52, you are correct. Okay, you can kind of take an estimate knowing that 150 plus 50 is going to get you close to 200. 80 plus 60 is going to be way over or less than 200. 198 is only two away from 200. So if we add 71, we're going to be way over 200. So 153 plus 52 would be the correct answer for that one. All right, next one, you're going to do the same thing. Write this answer in your notebook. Which of these has a sum of less than 500? 145 plus 188, 396 plus 285, 403 plus 112. Which one has a sum that is less than 500? Not equal to or more than, but less than 500. All right, if you decided 145 plus 188, you are correct. Okay, 100 and 100 make 200. 50 plus 90 makes... I'm drawing a blank. 50, 50 plus 90, 5 and 9 make 14, so 140. So 200 plus 140 is 340. So that would be less than 500. Okay, 400 plus 300 is going to get you more 800, so that's going to be over 500. 400 plus 100 is only going to get you close to 500. All right, next, last one. Again, write your answer in your notebook. Which of these has a sum less than 600? So we're still doing less than, less than 600. 189 plus 432. 451 plus 154, or 252 plus 342, which one's going to be less than 600? If you chose 252 plus 342, you are correct. Okay, this is close to 250, this is close to 350, so 300 and 200 make um, 500 and then 50 and 50 make 600. So it would be a little less than 600. 451 plus 154, 400 and 100 makes 500. 50 and 50 make another 100, which would be 600. And 189 plus 432, you have um, 
close to 200, close to 400, 200 and 400 would be 600, but it would be a little bit over 600. So the closest you're going to get is 252 plus 342. All right, let's move on to our math message. Okay, you're going to do this in your notebook as well. So it says, fill in the unit box, solve using base 10 blocks, be ready to show and explain what you did. So the Monday before we went on Thanksgiving vacation, Miss Faye reviewed with you how to show um, a subtraction problem using base 10 blocks. So remember, you can draw a dot for a cube, a long is a line, and then a flat is a 10. The cubes are worth 1. The longs are worth 10, and the flats are worth 100. Remember, you start with your bigger number and then take away your smaller number. So go ahead in your notebook and see if you can draw the base 10 blocks and figure out what 71 minus 46 equals. All right, let's take a look. So if we were drawing 71 with base 10 blocks, we would start by drawing seven longs for our tens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we have one cube or one ones. Let's see if it'll let me make a dot here. Okay, so we have one cube. So now I have to take 46 away from 71. So you want to start with your ones. 46 has six ones, but my sketch of my base tens, I only have one one here. So can I take six away from one? No, you cannot. So that means we have to trade in a 10, if you remember, trade in a 10 for 10 ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. So now I have 1, 1 plus 10 ones that I traded in my long for. So I have a total of 11 ones. Now do I have enough to take 6 away from? Yes. I can take 6 out of here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that means I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 left over for my 1s. So my 1s place of my answer is going to end in a 5. Now I have 4 10s and I need to take them away from the 7 10s that I have here. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 left. Is 6 enough to take 4 out of? Yes it is. So let's go ahead and X off 4 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4 leaves me with two tens and five ones, so two tens and five ones, my answer or your answer should have been 25, okay? This is showing you that you have to trade in your tens or your longs for ones and break them up so that you have enough to borrow from and take away your six. And then same with your tens, okay? So 25 should have been your answer for that. All right, so today, our goal by the end of today is that you should be able to say that you can use and you can use expand and trade subtraction. Okay, the kids in my class know that we always have goals that I have up on my board, so I'm going to start using those goals with you guys. So hopefully by the end of today, you can say, I know how to use expand and trade subtractions. And hopefully you can say that, especially since we went over them the day before Thanksgiving and are going over them again today. So now let's look at some problems, and you're going to do these problems on your notebook paper along with me, okay? So the first one we're going to go over is 53 minus 27. So in order to do expand and trade subtraction, you're going to put them on top of each other. So let's rewrite this, and you should just write it this way in your notebook. 53 minus 27, and then your equals line underneath that. So go ahead and write that on your notebook paper. I want you to do these along with me. The first thing we're going to do is expand. 
So expand 53, 53 expanded is 50 plus 3. 27 expanded is 20 plus 7. And then you're going to equals those. Now, I like to draw a line down my plus signs because then it divides up my 1s from my 10s. Okay, you want to keep your 1s and your 10s in line. So now I have a 3 at the top minus 7. Think about back to if you would draw this picture, you would only have three ones in your for your ones to take seven away from. Can you take seven away from three? You cannot. So that means we have to trade a 10. So I had five tens, but if I take one 10 away, I'm going to be left with four tens or 40. And I'm going to give that 10 to this three. So three plus 10 more gets me a total of 13. So now I have 13 ones, and I have enough to take away my 7. So 13 minus 7, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, gives me 6 that are left. Okay, now I can move on to my 10s place. 40 minus 20, or 4, take away 2, gets me 2 with a 0, so 20 plus 6, now you can put it back together, 20 plus 6 gives me an answer of 26. Okay, you're doing the same thing we do with the base 10, you're just trading your 10s for your, um, trading your 10s in for 1 so that you have enough to borrow from or to borrow from to take away the amount that you need to on the top. Okay, so let's try another one. Okay, I want you to write this one up and down in your notebook. 66, do it along with me, minus 48. Okay, first thing we're going to do is expand. So 66 expanded is 60 plus 6. 48 expanded is 40 plus 8. Okay, and I like to draw my line and divide my tens and my ones. So now I'm going to look at my ones place first. I have only six on top. So if I only have six, can I take eight out of six? You cannot. So that means we have to trade a ten. So we're going to take a ten away from the sixty. Leaves me with fifty. And I'm going to give ten to my six. So six plus ten more equals sixteen. 16, take away 8. Now I have enough that I can take 8 away from, and I know 8 plus 8 equals 16, so that means I have 8 ones left over. Okay, now in my tens place, I have 50 minus 40. 50 take away 40 means I have 10 left. So 10 plus 8 gets me an answer of 18. So 66 minus 48 equals 18. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, I want you to keep doing these in your notebook with me. So this one, let's write up and down. 240, oops, 241 minus 125 equals. First thing we're going to do is expand. 241 expanded is 200 plus 40 plus one. Now we have our hundreds places. So line up your hundreds. 100 plus 20 plus 5 equals. And then I like to draw my lines to divide up my ones, my tens, and my hundreds. Okay. We still have to start at the ones place. So my first number on top is a 1. 1 take away 5. Can I take 5 out of 1? We cannot take 5 out of 1, so that means we have to trade a 10 in. So I had 40 10s, but if I took one away to trade it in for 10 ones, that means I would have 30 10s left. I had one 1, and then I gave it 10 more, so 1 plus 10 more gets me a total of 11. 11 minus 5, I now have enough that I can take 5 out of, and I know 5 plus 6 gets me 11, so my answer must be 6 in my ones place. 
Okay, now let's look at the tens place. I have 30 tens, take away 20. If I have three tens, can I take two tens away? We sure can. If we take two away, we are left with one ten. Okay, then move on to your hundreds place. 200 minus 100. If I have two hundreds, can I take one away? Yes, I can, and I am left with one hundred. So 100 plus 10 plus 6 gets me 116 left. So 241 minus 125 equals 106 T. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, this is the one from the problem that you already did with your base 10 block. So if we do it with expand and trade, we should get the same answer of 25. So let's see if that works. So 71 expanded is 70 plus 1. 46 expanded is 40 plus 6. So start with our ones place. We only have one on the top. So I cannot take 6 away from 1. So that means I have to trade in a 10. So if I trade in a 10, that means I have 60 left. And I gave that 10 to my 1s. So 1 plus 10 gets me a total of 11. 11 plus or minus 6 gets me 5. 5 plus 6 equals 11. Then go on to your 10s place. 60 minus 40 gets me a total of 20 left over. 20 plus 5 gets me an answer of 25. Okay, we got the same thing. All this is is just drawing out what we do with those base 10 blocks. It makes it no different than what we did with the base 10. Okay, let's try another one. Hopefully you're still writing these in your notebook and going along with me. If you need to pause the video and catch up, you are more than welcome to pause the video and catch up. Okay, you don't have to go at the same speed I am. Just pause the video and then play it whenever you're ready. All right, the next one we're going to write in our notebooks is 353 minus 168. First thing we're going to do is expand. 353 expanded is 300 plus 50 plus 3. Breaking up your hundreds, your tens, and your ones. 168 expanded, 100, plus 60, plus 8, okay, equals, I like to draw my lines to break up my ones, my tens, and my hundreds. Starting at my ones place, I have three ones, can I take eight away? If I only have three, can I take eight away? I cannot, so that means I have to trade in a ten. So I had five tens. If I took one away, that would leave me with four tens or 40. And then I gave that 10 to my three. So 10 plus, or three plus 10 gets me a total now of 13 ones. I now have 13. Can we take eight away from 13? Yes, we can. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So eight plus five gets me 13. So that means I have five ones left. Okay, 40, take away 60. If I only have four tens, can I take six away? We cannot take six away. So now we have to borrow from our hundreds place. So we have to trade in one flat or 100. So that would leave me with 200 left. And we have to give 100 to our 40. So I had 40 plus 100 equals 140. Or you can think of it as 14 and 6. Okay, so now can I take 6 out of 14? Yes, we can. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 gets me 8. So that means I have 80 left. Okay, now let's go to our tens place. 200 minus 100 gets me 100. Okay, so 100 plus 80 plus 5 gets me a total of 185. Okay, key is to always start at your ones place, borrow from your tens if you need to, then go to your tens place. If you need to borrow from the hundreds so that you have enough to take away your tens, you're going to borrow from the hundreds, and then you should have enough hundreds that you wouldn't have to borrow anywhere else to get that answer. Okay, so 185. 
All right, let's try another one. Write this one in your notebook. 104 minus 37. 104 minus 37. Okay, let's expand 134, which would become 100 plus, I'm going to put my zero in my tens place, plus four. It's important to put your zero in your tens place because your second number is 37, and you have to make sure you line up your tens and your ones. So there are zero hundreds in 37. There are 30 tens or three tens, which makes 30, and then seven ones. So it's very important to line up your hundreds, your tens, and your ones, okay? This is part of the reason why Miss Faye always draws lines down between her tens, hundreds, and ones, so I keep them all in the same place. They have to be in the same place, okay? All right, now let's look at our ones place. I have a four on top. If I have four, can I take seven away? There are not enough fingers to take seven away. So I have to borrow from my tens place. Uh-oh. My tens place doesn't have anything there. It's zero. I have zero tens. So that means I have to go to my hundreds place. Now, I have a hundred here to take away. So I can take away a hundred or a flat and trade it in for ten tens or a hundred. Okay. So now I have 100 minus 30, which would work, but I now have 100 that I can use to give to my 4. So if I take 10 away from 100 now, that leaves me with 9, okay? You want to look at this as 10 10. So I have a 10 here with a 0. 10 10s would be a 10 with a 0. 9 10s would be a 9 with a 0. So you had 10 10s. If you took one 10 of those away, you would have 9 left over, so it would be 90, and then you can give that 10 that you took away from the 100 to the ones place. So this you have to trade twice in order to get it to the ones place, okay? You have to, there's nothing, there was nothing in the tens place, so we had to go to the hundreds place, take away the 100, break it up into longs or 10, I mean take the flat and break it up into 10 longs, which would be 100, and then I had to take one of those 10 longs and break it up to make it 10 ones. So then I had to take 100 and make it 90 and add the 10 that I took from the 100 to the 4 to get me my 14. Now I have 14 ones minus 7. Can I do that? Yes, we can. 7 and 7 make 14, so that means I would have 7 left over. Now let's look at our ones place. 90 minus 30. I can do that. 9 take away 3 gets me 60. 0 take away 0 just gets me 0. So that means my answer that is left over is 60 plus 7, which makes 67. So 104 minus 37 equals 67. Right? Let's try. There's two more we're going to try together, and then I will try some on your own. All right, write this one in your notebook. 437 minus 248. Okay, first thing we're going to do is expand 400 plus 30 plus 7. 248 expanded, 200 plus 40 plus 8. Break up your ones, tens, and your hundreds. Okay, looking at my ones place, 7 take away 8. If I have 7, can I take 8 out of 7? I can't. I almost can, but I don't have 1 to take away, so we cannot take 8 away from 7. So that means I have to trade in a 10. So I have 3 10s here. I'm going to trade in 1, so that leaves me with 20. And I'm going to give it to the 7. 7 plus 10 gets me a total of 17. 17 minus 8 I can do, which leaves me with 9. Okay. Looking at our 10s place now. 20, take away 4. If I have 2, can I take 4 away? We cannot. So that means we have to trade in 100. So let's take away 100 from 400. Leaves me with 300. 
And that means I added 100 to my 20. So 20 plus 100 is 120. Okay. Now you can think of this as 12 tens. 120 would be 12 tens. If I have 12 tens, take away 4. Can I take 4 out of 12? Yes. I'm left with 8 with a 0 or 8 tens, so 80. And then in our hundreds place, we have 300 minus 200. And I know 3 take away 2 is 1. So that means I have 100 left. So 100 plus 80 plus 9 is 189. So 437 minus 248 equals 189. All right, last one you're going to do with me, and then I'm going to have you try some in your math journal. Last one I want you to write down is 524 minus 432. 524 minus 432. All right, 524 expanded is 500 plus 20 plus 4, 432, 400, plus 30, plus 2. Equal sign, break up your tens, your ones, and your hundreds. Okay, starting at your ones place, the four is on top, so four, take away two. Can I do that? Sure can. I have four. I can take two away. That means I'm left with 2. Okay, let's look at our tens place. I have two tens or 20, take away 3. If I only have two tens, can I take three of them away? We cannot. So that means I have to trade in 100. So I'm going to take away my 500 and make it a 400. And I'm going to give 100 to my 20. So 100 or 20 plus. 100 equals 120, or 12 tens. If I have 12 tens, can I take away 3 tens from 12? You sure can. You would be left with 90. Okay, because 9 plus 3, 10, 11, 12, gets you 12. And then look at our hundreds place. 400 minus 400 equals 0. So that means 524 minus 432 gets me 90 plus 2, which is 92. Okay. All right. I now want you to open up your math journal to page 75. And I want you to try and complete. There are three problems on there for you to do. The first one is an example that looks like this, which is the same way that we have been doing the last few problems that you have done with me. Okay? So first you need to make an estimate, though. So 247 rounded to the nearest 10 is 250. 186 rounded to the nearest 100 is 200. So 250 minus 200 is 50, okay? You can round to the nearest 10 in both of them, or you can round to the nearest 100 in both of them, whichever way you want to estimate, okay? So that meant that your answer should be close to your estimate, okay? And then make sure you expand both numbers, start at your ones place, and work your way over to your hundreds place to find the actual answer. Their actual answer was 61, which is very close to 50, so that means that their answer makes sense. So go ahead and complete journal page 75, and then after you're done, go on to the next slide, and we'll talk about what the answers, what answers you should have got. Your journal page 75. Okay, you should have already completed it, and we're just going to go over answers. If you need to fix anything, go ahead, and you're more than welcome to go back and fix anything, but you should have already tried it on your own. Okay, the first problem was 65 minus 47, so the first thing you had to do was estimate. So when you're estimating, you're just rounding the numbers. So 65 rounded, 5 is the boss, it's in the ones place, tells the 6 to either 
go up one or stay the same. So four or less, if the boss is four or less, it's going to stay the same. If the boss is five or more, it's going to raise the score. So that means the six is going to raise to a seven and then the rest becomes a zero. Let me fix that. I don't know why it wrote that up there. So 70 minus, and then 47, 7 is the boss of the 4, 7 is more than 5, so it's going to raise the 4 to a 5 and become a 0. So 70 minus 50 equals 7 minus 5 equals 2. Answer should be 20. Okay, so our answer should be somewhere close to 20. If it's not close to 20, then our answer does not make sense. So let's go ahead and find our actual answer by using the expand and trade subtraction. So first you're going to write 65 minus 47 equals, okay, expand 65. 65 expanded is 60 plus 5, 47 expanded is 40 plus 7. Starting at your ones place, if you have five ones, you cannot take 7 away. You only have 5, you cannot take 7 out of 5, so that means we have to borrow from our tens place or trade our 10 in. So if we take away a 10 from 60, we're left with 50. Okay, and then we gave this 5, the 10 that we broke our long into, so 5 plus 10 gets us 15. 15 take away 7 equals 8. 50 take away 40 equals 10. So 10 plus 8 gives us an actual answer of 18. Is 18 close to 20? Yeah, it's only 2 away, so that means our answer definitely makes sense. So let's write 18 down on the line. So number one, you should have gotten 18. All right, let's go to the next screen. 182 minus 56 for number two. So first we're going to round. I'm gonna to round to the nearest 10 because when you round to the nearest 10, you're gonna get a closer answer. Your estimate's gonna be way closer to your answer. You can round to the nearest 100, you're just gonna be off a little bit more. It doesn't mean that you're gonna have the wrong answer, but you'll just be off away from your actual answer a little bit more than if you would just do to the nearest 10. So the eight is in the tens place here, and the two is the boss of the tens place. So 2 tells the 8 to stay because it's less than 4. The 1 stays 2. So this one would be 180 minus the 6 is the boss of the 5. 6 is more than 5. So that means the 5 is going to raise to a 6 and then add a 0. So 180 minus 60 equals, I know 8 minus 6 gets me 20. So I'm going to keep my 1 and 80 minus 60 equals 20. So my answer should be somewhere close to 120. So let's go ahead and write it out and see if that's what we get. So 80, or 182 minus 56, make sure your tens and your ones line up. The five should be underneath your eight and the six should be underneath your two. First, you're going to expand them. 100, I know why this is off for some reason. 100 plus 80 plus 2 and then expand 56 there are zero hundreds plus five tens or 50 plus six okay so then divide your tens and your ones and your hundreds um, 2 is at the top of our 1's column, so if I have 2, I cannot take 6 out of 2, so that means I have to trade in a 10. So if I trade in a 10, that leaves me with 70. 2 plus 10 gets me 12. 12, I can now take 6 away. 12 minus 6, I know 6 plus 6 gets me 12, so my answer is 6. 
70 take away 50. I can take 50 out of 70. Leaves me with 20. 100 take away nothing equals 100. So my actual answer is 126. My actual answer is very close to my estimate. I'm only six away. So that means that my answer does make sense. So I'm going to write it down on the line. So 126 for number two. All right, last one, number three, 341 minus 225. So first we're going to estimate. Like I said, I like to go to the nearest 10 because it'll get me to a closer number to my actual answer. So four is in my tens place. The one is the boss of the four. One is less than four. So that means that my four is going to stay the same. My three in the hundreds place is going to stay. So my rounded number is 340 minus the two in the middle is in the tens place. The five is the boss. Five or more, you raise the score. So that means the middle two is going to become a three. The two in the hundreds place stays 100, stays 200. Two in the tens place becomes a three, and then the ones place becomes a zero. So 340 minus 230. So zero minus zero in the ones place gets me zero. Four take away three gets me one. Three take away two gets me one. So my estimate is 110. Okay, so that means my actual should be somewhere close to 110. So let's write our problem up and down. 341 minus 225 equals, expand out 300 plus 40 plus one, 225 would be 200 plus 20 plus five. Break up your tens and your ones and your hundreds. Start at your ones place. One, take away five. If I have one, can I take five away? I cannot, so that means I have to trade my 10. If I take a 10 away from my 4, I get 30, and then add that 10 to my 1, so 1 plus 10 gets me a total of 11. 11, I can now take 5 away from 11, 11 minus 5 gets me 6, 30 take away 20, I can do that, I'm left with 10, 300 minus 200, I can do that, I'm left with 100. So 100 plus 10 plus 6 gets me 106. 106 is only 4 away from my estimate of 110. So that means my answer definitely makes sense. So let's write 106 on the line. Okay. Hopefully you did pretty well on those since we did so many um, problems together and we worked on it on the Monday before Thanksgiving. So hopefully you can now say I can use expand and trade subtraction. Okay, the next thing I would like you to do is turn to page 76 in your math journal. And page 76 is comparing data in a bar graph, okay? We've talked about bar graphs before, so this should kind of be review for you. On page 76, it says the bar graph shows the number of children in grade three who chose each type of favorite music. Use the graph to solve the number of stories. So there's the graph, and then it wants you to answer one, two, three, four problems. The last number four, you are making up your own question to ask about the graph. So kind of look what they did on numbers one, two, and three, and then you can use it to help you ask a question about the graph that somebody could answer. So you're going to write the question, and then you're also going to write the answer to whatever your story or question is. So go ahead and complete that journal page, and then go on to the next slide, and we'll go over the answers and see if you get the same thing I did.
All right, let's look at journal page 76. So first thing I want to discuss is the actual graph before we start answering any questions <clears throat> or going over the answers to any questions. So one thing that you always want to look at is the scale over here on the side. And I notice that this scale does not go by ones. It goes by 10. So each little rectangle is worth 10. Okay, half of a rectangle would be worth five. So hopefully you didn't just count the boxes like one, two, three, four, and say that hip hop had four because they didn't have four, they had 40. Okay, however high that line goes, you want to go over to your scale and see how high or how much it is worth. Okay, so the scale is very important to pay attention to because it doesn't always go by one. All right, so let's look at the first question. How many more children like rock than jazz? So rock has 55 and jazz has 20. So whenever it says how many more, you're finding the difference or how much um, is in between 20 and 55. So 20 and 55 would be 10, 20, 30, plus five more would be 35 children. So this should be 35. <clears throat> Okay, number two, how many fewer children like classical than hip hop? Okay, this is fewer is the same as how many more, how many fewer, how many more. So hip hop has 40, classical has 15. So this would be five, 10, or five plus 10 is 15, plus 10 more is 25. So how many fewer children like classical than hip hop should be 25 children. Number three, how many more children like hip hop than classical and jazz together? So this is a two-step problem. First, we have to figure out how much classical and jazz are together. So jazz is 20, 10, 20. Classical is 15, so 20 plus 15, 10, 20, 30, 35. Okay, and hip hop has 40. So how many more children like hip hop than classical and jazz? If classical and jazz together make 35 and hip hop is 40, 40 plus what equals 35? And we know that 40 plus five equals 35. So that means our answer is five more children, okay? Number four, this was you writing your own number story that could be solved using the graph. Write the answer to your story, okay? So one story that you could write is how many more children like rock than classical, okay? One thing you could ask is how many total children voted for their favorite music type? Okay, so you could add up all of them. There are many different questions that you could ask about this. So hopefully you wrote a story or a question and you had it in a question form. So starting with how and then ending with a question and then answering your question. So like I said before, hopefully you looked at three, two, and one, how they asked those questions and created your own question and the answer to it. Do not forget that unit on the end of your answer. Okay. Next thing I want you to do after you have completed this page is your math boxes on page 77. Okay, there are six problems. So I want you to go ahead and answer those and then see, you'll come back with me and we'll go over those answers. And then the last thing you'll have to do today is your home link. Okay, so go ahead and complete journal page 77. All right, let's go over the math boxes on page 77. Number one, the normal spring high temperature in Los Angeles is 72 degrees Fahrenheit. The normal low is 56 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the difference between the temperatures? Okay, so it's first asking you to write a number model, and I would write the number model with a question mark because we're not finding the answer quite yet. So one way you could write the number model when you're finding the difference is, let me fix this for some reason. My pen is off from where I'm writing. All right, let's try this. So the number model should be 72 minus 56 equals question mark. Or you could do 56 plus question mark 
equals 72. Okay. When I'm solving problems, I like the um, number model that has my question mark at the end because that's what I'm finding. Whenever I have my what I'm finding as my answer, I think it makes it a lot easier. So then we can do our expand and trade that we just learned about today. 72 minus 56, 70 plus 2 if we expand 72, 50 plus 6. Okay, looking at your 1s, I have 2 to start with. Can I take 6 away from 2? We cannot, so that means we have to trade our 10. So take 10 away from 70 gets me 60. And then I'm going to add that 10 to my 2. So 2 plus 10 equals 12. Now I have enough that I can take 6 away from. And I know 6 plus 6 equals 12. So 12 minus 6 equals 6 ones. 60 take away 50. If I have 6, I can definitely take 50 away. That leaves me with 10. So my answer is 16. Okay. So answer is 16 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, let's look at problem number two. Fill in the circles next to the measurements that are about equal to the mass of a thousand paper clips. Remember, we talked about before, one paper clip is about one gram. Okay, so fill in the circles next to the measurements that are about equal to a thousand paper clips. Okay, so would 10 grams be equal to a thousand paper clips? If one paper clip is worth one gram, 10 grams would only be 10 paper clips. It would not be a thousand paper clips. So that one would not work. About a thousand grams. If one paper clip is one gram and I have a thousand paper clips, it definitely would be about a thousand grams. So B, you can have filled in. Okay, about one kilogram. If you remember from before, a thousand grams is the same as one kilogram. So C would also be the same as a thousand paper clips. About a, a hundred kilograms. A hundred kilograms would be a thousand times a hundred, which would be way more than what we have there. So the only two that would work in number two are B and C. Okay. All right, number three, Rita has 26 stickers and shares them equally among herself and two friends. How many stickers does each get? So Rita has 26 stickers, shares them equally among herself and two friends. So that means I have a total of three people. How many stickers does each get? So I'm finding how many stickers does each get. So if I have 26 stickers and three friends. So this problem, we are definitely dividing. We are taking 26 and we are breaking it up by three friends. Okay, I always like to tell my kids that it's like dealing out cards. So if you have 26 stickers, you're going to deal out your stickers to each friend until you have no stickers left. So I like to draw a picture for this one. Let's draw three circles for our three friends. And then I have 26. So I'm going to give each circle one until I get to 26. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Now, if I put two more into the first two, but don't put it into the second two, they're not all going to have equal amounts. They have to be equal. So that means I have two that I cannot give to these friends. Okay. You cannot have two circles or two friends have one more than another friend. They all have to have the same. Okay. So I noticed that I would have two extra in those two. So I put those outside, meaning that no friend got those two. So how many stickers does each get? So now I just have to count how many is in one circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So each friend gets eight stickers and there are two left over. So our number model, like I said, we were dividing. So we had 26 stickers, start with your big number, 
divided by her and two friends, which would be three people, equals each friend would get eight total stickers with a remainder, a capital R, remainder or leftover of two. Okay, so 26 divided by three equals eight with a remainder of two. All right, number four. Complete the fact triangle, write the fact family. So we have five and eight, and we are multiplying or dividing. Whenever you're finding the number at the dot, you are definitely multiplying. So five times eight, if I count by fives eight times, I get five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So that means my product is 40. Okay, so now that I have my three numbers, I can go ahead and write the fact family. So my first fact family is going to be eight times five. Let me write it again. Eight times five equals 40. I'm only using those three numbers that are in my triangle. So then you're going to do the, um, you're going to switch your eight and your five. Five times eight equals 40. So this is the commutative property of multiplication. That's what I was trying to think of. The commutative property of multiplication is whenever you switch the two numbers, or you might hear it as the turnaround rule, but the term for it is the commutative property of multiplication. So you just flip your two um, quotients. All right, next one, you're going to start with your big number. So this is like subtraction, except you're dividing. Start with big number, 40 divided by 5 equals 8. Start with your big number again, 40 divided by, instead of 5 this time, you're going to do 8 equals five, okay? So those are the four that you should have for number four. All right, number five, record the time. Okay, remembering the shorthand tells you the hour and this hour hand is in between the four and the five. So you always go backwards. So it means it is at four o'clock. And then our minute hand is the longer hand, and it is pointing on the 7. So remember, the big numbers, you go by 5. So starting at 12, 12 is 0. So this would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So you should have 4, 35. What time will it be in 25 minutes? So if I have 35 minutes right now and add 25 onto it, let's do it over here. Thirty-five plus 25 minutes, five and five make 10, carry your one, three plus one plus two gets me six. Now when we have 60 minutes, it means it is the next hour. 60 minutes makes an hour. So if we add 25 minutes onto 35 minutes, it will be the next hour, which would be five o'clock. Okay, so 4.35 is what the time is. 25 minutes later would be five o'clock. Anything over 60, like if we would have got 65, it would have been the next hour and then five minutes after that, which would have been 5.05, okay? All right, last one. A soccer ball has a mass of 425 grams. As I'm reading these word problems, I like to circle numbers or words that I think are important. A softball has a mass of about 184 grams. What is the total mass? So I'm trying to find the total mass. So my number model with a question mark. Since I'm finding the total, it means I have to add up both of these numbers. So my number model is going to be 425 plus 184 equals question mark what we're trying to find okay so now let's I like to line mine up and down it makes it easier one or 425 plus 
184. 5 and 4 make 9, always starting in that one's place. 8 and 2 make 10. So 0, carry my 1. 4 plus 1 plus 1 makes 6. So that means my answer is 609. And we need our unit. So what were we trying to find? We were trying to find the total mass. And the mass in this problem, what we're weighing with, is grams. So it should be 609 grams. Okay. If you need to fix any of your math boxes as I was going over them that you made a little mistake or you maybe added a thing wrong, go ahead and fix them. But just make sure that you completed them all and that they are all done. The last thing that you are going to do today is your home link. Now, some of you get your home link. Um, you get like a book of your home links that you may have. Some others, it may be in the packet that your teacher gave you. Like my kiddos, we don't have the um, book, so you should have it in the packet that was sent home with you. So just open up your packet and go ahead and complete your home link, and your teacher will be looking at it tomorrow. Great job today.